welcome back to Recalibrate, a Samsung podcast. I'm your host, Timothy Day, and we've got another great conversation lined up for you. Today's wireless network technologies are promising to create the best wireless experiences ever. From a technology point of view, the wireless industry, Samsung included, is building the products and helping providers deploy networks that will fulfill these promises. But there is one critical component that no vendor or operator can create or build, and that's spectrum. Wireless networks use electronic waves to make the wireless connection between the user and the network. As with other natural resources, think water, and energy sources like oil and natural gas, the data-carrying electronic waves are limited. Today we will learn about various spectrum bands and how Samsung helps network operators maximize the use of these critical resources. With me today is Kat Robinson, Network's Strategy Manager at Samsung Electronics America. Kat is here to help us understand the value of Spectrum to 5G and why there is so much going on in Spectrum auctions in the United States. Welcome, Kat. Hi, Timothy. Great to be here today. To get us started, what is the big deal with Spectrum? We just saw the completion of auction 107 in January for the C-band Spectrum. Companies from wireless and cable providers to vertical-focused industry corporations commit to investing more than $81 billion for air. What's all the interest here? So Spectrum is a big deal, and the value is really what drives the interest. As you mentioned, it's limited. There's a fixed amount of this critical resource. Since cellular systems need to balance coverage with speed, they need to use the right spectrum to achieve those goals. So current 5G networks are using two classes of spectrum. First, we have what's called sub-6 gigahertz. And this includes the same license spectrum we used for 3G and 4G. So 600 to 800 megahertz AWS, PCS, and 100 megahertz in the 2500 megahertz band. These are valuable as they can only be used by operators and businesses who have the license for a portion of that range. 5 gigahertz band and some of the newly available spectrum like CBRS General Authorized Access, GAA, allows users to share the spectrum without a license. Access to that spectrum is possible as long as a business registers to use it and complies with other users' sharing arrangements. So what about that C-band? Yeah, so the C-band auction that just concluded, as well as the CBRS Priority Access License, uh, or PAL, auction late last year, are for licenses in the higher end of that sub-6 spectrum, which provide higher speeds than the low-band spectrum used in prior wireless networks with excellent coverage. The way that the recently concluded C-band auction worked was the FCC divided up about 280 megahertz of spectrum into 20 megahertz segment blocks. That balance of speed and coverage with larger channel sizes really makes the C-band spectrum very desirable to operators. So Kat, all of that is sub six gigahertz spectrum. Uh, What's left? Right, so the other class of spectrum is millimeter wave and that starts in spectrum bands much higher, like 26 gigahertz. And that license spectrum provides much higher speeds compared to the sub six gigahertz band, but requires a ton more sites to provide the necessary coverage. To circle back to where we started, spectrum is a limited and very critical resource. So it makes sense that operators and companies are really eager to gain access to that spectrum that meets their particular needs. So Kat, the FCC controls access to these bands of spectrum. So how do they decide how much spectrum to allocate and how much does an operator really need? The FCC wants to maximize the spectrum's value. So in terms of C-band spectrum, they're providing incentives to the current C-band users to move to other ranges so that 5G operators can have access to that first 100 megahertz for commercial use as soon as December of this year. To your question of how much an operator needs, the amount of spectrum an operator or business acquires allows them to establish wider paths or roadways for carrying their traffic. Um, As you may imagine, a larger channel can transport more data, and a larger channel in higher frequency spectrum can move more data faster. Kat, can you break that down a little further for our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So channels in the low band spectrum range from 1.5 megahertz to 20 megahertz. These low band carriers provide good speeds and can cover a good amount of distance. 
Mid-band spectrum, such as C-band, has channels that range from 10 to 20 megahertz in size and can carry more data while providing coverage that can penetrate buildings and walls and foliage. High band spectrum is the fastest. Uh, we're talking orders of magnitude faster than low band, but on the flip side, it doesn't penetrate buildings or walls and can encounter interference from trees and even rain near the edge of its coverage range. So Kat, it sounds like it would make sense for an operator then to obtain spectrum across all these bands. Absolutely, but the amount needed in each band is really based on how the operators view their customers using these channels. They can also use what's called carrier aggregation and multi-user MIMO with beamforming capabilities to improve speeds and extend coverage for more users. The first feature I mentioned, carrier aggregation, is essentially combining two or more carriers into one data channel to enhance the data capacity. The easiest way to do this is with two or more contiguous channels within the same frequency band. And then the second thing I mentioned was MIMO, which stands for multiple input, multiple output. And that means multiple antennas on a radio are transmitting and receiving more data at the same time. And by creating these multiple paths between the base station and end devices, we're improving something called spectral efficiency per cell, and in turn, the number of users who are served simultaneously. With massive MIMO comes something called beamforming technology, and that allows radio signals to focus on specific user devices instead of broadcasting this broad signal across a much larger area. So as a result, there's less interference and signal quality is significantly improved. All of these features I just touched upon work to increase the operator's system's efficiency, which results in reduced cost per bit for connectivity. With all these increased efficiencies, operators can spend higher amounts in spectrum auctions, as we just saw in C-band, and they can clearly see the benefits. Kat, it sounds like there's a lot at stake in these uh, spectrum auctions. So how do operators go about them, and how is Samsung involved in these? So the network operators have actually created tools that tell them exactly how much each bit costs in each market. And in this way, they're able to take most of the speculation off the table because they know the financial parameters. Where Samsung comes into play is we provide that top-of-the-line cutting-edge radio equipment that operates across the 4G and 5G spectrum ranges, so we're well-positioned to help operators and other companies then optimize the spectrum that they purchase. Kat, can you tell us something about Samsung's product offerings in this space? Absolutely. Let me quickly walk you through some of our network equipment. So Samsung's existing 4G portfolio of radios enable a gradual and smooth migration to 5G through software feature upgrades while keeping the existing hardware in 700, 800, AWS, PCS, 2.5 gigahertz, and 3.5 gigahertz spectrum. Samsung also has a strong portfolio of 5G in-building solutions. Um, our indoor product portfolio really covers all frequency bands from millimeter wave to mid and low band spectrum and provides diverse options to meet a carrier's needs. Our primary solutions here are what we call the Link Cell, Link Hub, and the Link Hub Pro. So the Link Cell is really for optimal indoor deployments, whereas our Link Hub allows for fast and easy upgrades to transition an indoor network to 5G. And then the Link Hub Pro is essentially an indoor 5G service accelerator. So it really serves as a coverage expansion solution at early deployment stage and later a capacity solution to adapt as there are increasing traffic demands. And Kat, what about the massive MIMO solutions? Yeah. So Samsung also has a 5G C-band massive MIMO radio solution, and it's built on that same 64T64R platform deployed throughout the U.S. today, but upgraded to support the C-band spectrum. It utilizes 64 antennas, supports up to 280 megahertz bandwidth, and delivers a 200 watt power. So I know this is a ton of information, but let me wrap up with this. Samsung also supports a fully virtualized and disaggregated RAN architecture. That overcomes many of the challenges of conventional networks by breaking up features into smaller components that can be individually relocated as needed without hindering their ability to work together. 
So by being disaggregated, operators can manage their networks more flexibly, which really helps expedite the rollout of new sites. Overall, the whole product suite I just went through really maximizes the utilization of the spectrum, which in turn helps eliminate financial risks for operators. Kat, that RAN lineup is impressive. I can see how network operators can use Samsung's RAN equipment to maximize their investment in Spectrum. Definitely. I'll add that not only do network operators get great equipment today, but they're also purchasing from a company that's really driving new tech. Samsung helps operators explore C-band's full benefits by connecting people and businesses with 5G-powered experiences wherever they are. That's one thing that I love about Samsung, where we're really constantly improving our product portfolio and helping our customers create the networks that provide paths to bigger, better, and faster. Kat, that's amazing. It's great to hear how Samsung is bringing the right networks to their customers when they need them. So Kat, thanks again for sharing with our listeners how Samsung's 5G C-band powered RAN can help network operators bring us leading edge high tech connectivity. You're so welcome and thanks for having me. And to our audience, thank you for listening in on today's podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on Recalibrate.